All right, hey guys, welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you are new here. Now, it's been a hot moment since we've been in the backyard checking out the koi pond, and there's been a reason for it. It's cold outside, which unfortunately means the pond has suffered. And by suffered, I mean all the plants have died, so. But regardless, I've been a little bit bored with the pond. It's covered in algae. It's not looking too good. We'll get into that. But the pond needs some new life to it. It's going to be up and running for the entire winter, and we have no plants to you know, liven up the space, brighten up the pond. So I decided it was time to get another koi fish. Now this is not just a small koi fish, it's a big koi fish. Uh, as you saw from the thumbnail, that's the box I had to get this koi fish in. It's huge, which is what I was looking for. I love huge koi fish. I think they look so awesome when they're adult and their colors are grown in with the super long flowy fins. I already have two pretty large koi fish in my pond. So without further ado, I think it's time to take a deeper look at the pond. Let's check out what's going on there. So for starters, I'm not gonna lie, the pond looks really bad right now. This is probably the worst it's ever looked, except for a huge algae bloom I had when I first set it up. The waterfall is all slanted because it hasn't been cleaned in a while. All of the plants in these pots that used to be huge, beautiful elephant ear plants all went ahead and died back. All of our lilies that normally cover probably over a third of this pond surface are all dead. That lily over there, all dead as well. We just have our koi that are pretty much hibernating at the bottom. This algae that you see here has covered pretty much the entire surfaces of the pond. Literally everywhere is just covered in algae. If you don't know about this pond though, this is my 1,000 gallon koi pond I built with the help from Awaze. We have an Awaze pump under there, an Awaze skimmer, and a Awaze waterfall. Ignore the ducks by the way, but then all of this pond's equipment is plumbed underground and runs to a canister filter back there. We have a few small goldfish as well as two large koi and some small koi as well. Other than that, just because of the winter, the pond has just been looking so nasty and sad. I'll go ahead and put up a picture of what the pond normally looks like, I promise, and normally looks dope, but the winter just isn't pretty. So now that we checked out the pond, we know what's going on, I'm gonna go ahead and throw you back to the day I actually purchased the yellow tang. That is when I was at the saltwater fish store. Well, it's a, it's just a normal fish store. They just have a ton of saltwater fish and freshwater fish, really. And I came across this koi. Now, I've seen this koi the past three times I was there. I talked to the guy about the price, the owner of the store, and he told me it was gonna be 100 bucks three months ago. Well, the koi fish was still sitting there three months later, so he let me have it for 70 bucks. Without further ado, I'll go ahead and throw you back to the footage of me getting this fish. So this right here is the butterfly koi I've had my eye on. He's this beautiful golden color with some black spots and the nice white flowy fins. He's been in this 55 gallon aquarium for a while. So I think it is finally time that I went ahead and pulled the trigger and got him. So as you can see, he looks so sad in this tank. He needs a new home. Went ahead and bagged him up. It was a process to say the least. As you can see, it took a couple minutes of just dumping water into this trash bag to get it full, but we finally got him ready for the ride home. So as you can see, we went ahead and bagged him up in this huge styrofoam cooler inside of a box. So there's two trash bags, dumped a whole bunch of water in the trash bags, put the fish in the trash bag, and went ahead and got him ready to come home an hour and a half away. But I'll go ahead and throw you over to that footage where we acclimate the new koi into his 1,000 gallon home compared to the tiny sad 55 gallon aquarium he was in. Okay, I'm sorry about the horrible lighting, but our huge koi is in the back of the car. It's in a bag, in a bag, in a box, in my trunk, propped up, so it shouldn't slide around too much. I think we're going to be good. Um, we'll just have to see that. I'll see you guys in an hour and a half, and hopefully our koi will be alive and well. But we'll see. <laughs> So we're home now, an hour and a half later. Here is our koi. It looks like there was no water spillage, which is good. I'm gonna go ahead and get this out of my car and by the pond and we'll take a closer look. Okay, I'm at the pond and here's our koi. So I went ahead and popped off the lid, the little styrofoam thing, and here, well, you can't really see him. Okay, there he is. He looks really good from the top down. I did pay 70 bucks for him, which is a lot, but at the same time, I think it will be worth it. So I'm literally just gonna go ahead and grab a net real quick. He's been sitting out here like this next to the pond to temperature acclimate, and they're basically the same temperature. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a net real quick because there's no other way to move this guy. And it's gonna be hard to do with one hand, especially because he's in a trash bag or two trash bags. Oh, maybe it's easier than I thought. And right into the koi pond he goes. So there he is, he's about the same size as the other guys, maybe a little bit bigger actually, a little bit longer, but I think he's gonna do a lot better in this huge koi pond. 
than that tiny 55 gallon tank. Now I will say the pond, like I mentioned earlier, is looking really bad right now. It is winter. Once it warms up, this nasty algae will be out of here and we'll have the beautiful lily pads and elephant ear plants again. It's just winter so all the plants die and the pond looks just kind of boring. But as soon as spring comes, it will look amazing, I promise. So it is the next day, coming to check on the pond. As you can see, everything is doing good. The ducks are quacking in the background. But there are three big koi. They were just up at the surface begging for food, so I thought we'd go ahead and try to feed them. See, they're coming up for food. They know it's time to get food. They don't eat too much in the winter, but I thought I would go ahead and throw in some flakes for them. I normally feed pellets, but I feel like flakes are a little bit easier for them to digest in the winter when everything's kind of slowing down. I just have these basic tetra pond flakes. It's nothing fancy right now, but I thought I'd go ahead and throw these in just to see what we eat. They eat this stuff all the time, all the little baby ones, but it's a little bit more difficult to get the big guys to eat. I know these two big koi, it took a while for them to start eating, so we'll see if our brand new massive butterfly koi, which by the way, that's the type of variation he is, or she is, it's a butterfly koi. Not sure why it's trying to bite the other fish, but okay. <laughs> there they go, or he or she. I think it's a girl actually, because they said it was laying eggs, so it must be a girl koi. So it's eating, she is eating, which is good. But yeah, she is a butterfly koi because of the long flowy fins. These guys don't have quite as long flowy fins. These guys are just standard koi. But that one over there is a butterfly koi because you see the super long flowy fins. For comparison, this koi was 70 bucks and the other two I got for 30 bucks a piece. That one is the only one I got from a fish store. The other two large koi I did go ahead and get from someone who had like five of those koi in their pond and they just outgrew their pond. So I gave them 30 bucks each. That's the price they were asking for. And then I went ahead and introduced them to my pond. I have a whole video on that. If you wanna check out how we got those two koi right there, you can go ahead and watch that video. But for now, I think our new butterfly koi is doing really, really well. <laughs> the ducks are over there quacking, by the way. We haven't seen them for a while. They're just as loud and quacky as ever. I don't know why they're in the coop right now, but they are. <laughs> oh, they're trying to attack me through the gate is what they're doing. But that is our 24 hour update for our massive butterfly koi. She is doing really, really well eating which is good we love to see it so other than the pond just being dirty and nasty from winter the fish really are thriving and just like that current day we're back at the pond let's check on this koi one last time so the weather has gotten a lot colder since the last time we saw this koi which was last week the temperature has dramatically dropped so the koi are actually going into a form of hibernation where they will not eat or do a whole bunch during this time but it's basically them adapting to the colder water temperature there is our butterfly koi still doing great in here when the water was warmer, he was eating great, but obviously now that the water is cooler, we're gonna go ahead and withhold food. Our other two standard fin koi are doing great also, and overall the fish in here thriving. I just cannot wait until the water warms up and we can get our plants back and thriving because all of these plants that all died, they will come back in the spring. But that is gonna be just about it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any ideas of what else we should add to this koi pond in the spring, go ahead and leave them down below. I love filling it up with plants, water lettuce, water hyacinth, any ideas you may have, go ahead and leave those down below. Smash this like button if you want to see more pond videos as hopefully the weather starts to warm up. We'll just have to see. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and good bye.